two and three. Hi, Marilyn here. And now we're going to be talking about parallelograms, which are on um, page one dash two of our um, piecing instructions. Now, as I said earlier, there's parallelograms in all of these blocks. So this is one I'm going to be going into a lot of detail. And then in other months, I'll just be talking about the color changes. So on the bottom of this, making the framing units, these are parallelogram step one. They show you making two of each. So you got to make 12. There's six different ones. And they are very particular in their colorway and the direction of the add-on units. So you have to be very, you have to pay close attention to which way they're going and you have to get them right. Okay. Um, so I'm going to be going through all the details. This is one of them pieced together. This is kind of what you're going for. Um, once you get it, they're not difficult and I'll show you the pressing directions so that in the back, we will nest them together so that they will match. Ha ha. It will work, okay? Trust me. So I'm going to show you, um, we oversize these. So instead of two and a half by four and a half, we cut them two and three quarters by four and three quarters. So you get a quarter inch of wiggle room. It's not tons, but it was enough to cut them down and have them turn out a little bit better. I know, all right? So these you can see. So in the, in the picture, they only show you the colorway in blue which I did, and then the next round, you have to transfer the blue to red. So now we're on the red. So I have them laid out because I thought it'd be helpful for you to see them in the red colorway. So I'm gonna make a couple in red, just to show you the demo, and then we'll have all the reds put together. I'll show you how they go. It's a little puzzle, but um, you know, you'll, you'll get it, okay? So I use the, a lot of you have been with me and we've done these parallelograms before. Um, I use a folded corner clipper to get the corners, um, but I've never oversized them before and I do like oversizing them. I wish I had thought of that before, but ah, here we are. Okay, so if you see this, I'm gonna actually show you what I've already done. I've done, I'll, I'll flip them for the camera. I've done this unit here, so you have to watch. So if the center stripe shows you the base, shows you the rectangle, and then these are added on corners. So the base, the center is the base color, the rectangle that you started with, okay? So this is this one with a gray and a gray to add it on each corner. This one I'm gonna make. This one is um, a, a red with the gray in the corner and the white. This is um, a gray, <laughs> it's somewhere. Oh, I think I'm making this one too with the oh, red. Yeah, I'm making that, that one. one. And then this one is a red with a white and a white in each corner, okay? And then we have this, We have I have four of them made. So then we have another one with a gray with a red in the corner. I think it's, oh, this one right here. We have that one. So we have four made. Okay, so I have two that I'm going to demo for you, one partially made and one that I'm going to fully make for you. So I'm going to make this one right up here with the red that goes in each corner. So it's the gray in the middle. So that means that you're starting with a gray rectangle. And you have to make two of each. So I'm just going to demo two. So how this works is you have to pay attention to which way the fold goes. So right now I'm going to face it towards me just so that I can see it, just so around. that he'll come around, camera will come around. So I'm making this one. And so it's always right sides together. So I can see that the fold's going to go this way, right? So I know that I'm just going to make a fold so that I know that my cut here has to go this way. So you can do this one of two ways. You can do it traditionally where you draw a line, and this is how they show it for you. They draw a line, okay? And they sew on the line, and then they cut it, and then they fold it over, and that's how it shows it in the book. And you can do it this way, and you can still cut it down, okay? You can go ahead and do that, and that's how the book shows it. 
and then you can go the different direction. The only thing that we're doing differently with the folded corner clipper is that rather than doing those three steps, we're putting our ruler here at two and three quarters. It's lined up on the edge and on the two and three quarters, we're taking our ruler and cutting it off. And then you can either take glue stick if you want and just to hold it in the corner in each corner or if you don't want to glue stick it you can take a pin and hold it in place okay and you need to do that twice why because there's as I two. told you there's two all right so what I did to speed up the process is I looked at all of them that had gray centers and a red corner if there were that such a thing and I did all of those at the same time or anything that had a white corner or whatever. I tried to, you know, multiply my my process a little bit. So I'm just going to stick a pin in here right now. Okay, so that's what we have to do first. Okay, so I'm going to move this out of the way. And then I'm just going to sew my edge on. And what this does, I forgot to mention, is this little indent is my quarter inch seam. So that ruler automatically sets you up for your quarter inch seam, which is really lovely. And so if you have more, you can just keep running more through. Okay, and then I'm going to clip that, pull my pins out, or if you've glued it, you don't have to worry about it. I'm gonna, you have to press it open. Now, how do you know which way to go? Well, now this is, I have to have one going. You always need one going in the opposite direction. So in this case, if you aren't sure, just turn, you know, look at the picture. So this is here. This one has to be going that direction. It has to be. It has to be going that direction, and I know it. I can see the picture. So I'm going to flip it, and I'm going to follow my little fold. Right sides together. Okay. You're right. It's right sides together. I know it has to be going that way. And then I'm going to, I can see the fold there, so it's kind of my little cheat line. And then I'll put my ruler right here. Okay. And I'll cut it. And then I'll just set that aside. And then I know I need the other one exactly the same way. Okay. And then I have that indent here, which is my quarter inch seam line. And I'm just going to sew that. And then you have to do one more step. You do have to cut these down to size. And you can cut them down to size with either a square up ruler or whatever you have, or you can use the wing clipper. Um, some of us have other Deb Tucker rulers. So you can use the wing clipper to square up. You can use a square up ruler. I use my Tucker trimmer because I have it and I just love to use it for squaring up. So I'm using my my Tucker trimmer, which is four and a half by two and a half, and just setting it down on the diagonal and squaring up that way. Because it has diagonal and lines. And it has diagonal lines. But a square ruler will have, a regular square ruler will have di diagonal lines as well. These are 45 degree? Yeah, and these are 45 degree lines. And I'll just put it on the two and a half and four and a half. And then cut it down. Okay? And that's your square up. Okay. So, there you Beautiful. have it. Okay, so now that you have these made, and I have one other one that... I don't, I don't need to show you that one. Okay, so you have 12 of these made. 
So now the diagram will show you that you have to lay these out in this particular direction. So you have to go and find your particular mates. So this one is here and then you have a white one that will be this direction. I mean a blue, a red one. And then you have a gr all gray one with white, which oh. is actually this one that we didn't quite make but it goes this way. And then you have a, um, a red one with gray and white and it goes this direction. This one would have a little edge on it. I just was gonna demo it, but we'll just pretend that it's made like that. I'll just pin that here. So that's one of your sides. Now, what I decided is every time that I'm making these, I press out. But what really you need to do is some of these need to be pressed in so that they nested. And I figured that out afterwards. And I kind of had a diagram as I made them, which way they go in and out. But in reality, you're going to have two each of these. It's easier to just take them afterwards and say, I'm going to press these two out. And I'm just going to take this one and take it to my pressing table and repress it in. And frankly, they pressed in easily. So I'll press those in, I'll keep those out, and I'll press these in. And it was really easy to change, but you need to do that so that they nest. So then when you see these, I have these pressed out and these pressed in. I sewed these two together first, I sewed this pair, and then I sewed that pair together. And I pinned them and they nested, and they nested really nicely. Oh, there's a little kitty. And afterwards, I did um, spray them. I put my spray, my um, basting spray, not my basting spray, my starch, starch spray in my um, spray bottle here because I really like how it sprays and I spray it and I do spray everything after I do my first press and it lays down nice and flat, okay? So you need to have two of these made that look like this in the red version. Okay, and then the last thing that we're gonna be talking about is you need to make six flying geese in alternate colors. The, the geese have two different colors. So I'll, we have one more thing to make and then we'll be ready to put the rest of our outside framing units together and then we'll be done with the block. Phew, okay, one more thing.